So I'm going to share with you how to make this pattern for the retraction test video that I made recently. And I'm going to do it on Cura. So we'll link to the original video right up here. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to create three files. I'm going to create a file for each column. So the column on the left is going to be 190 degrees. The column in the center or middle will be 200 degrees. And the column on the right will be 210 degrees. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check in the quality. I want to make sure that the layer height is set to 0.2. I want to make sure that my line width is set to 0.4. Next, we're just going to come on down here to the travel. And we're going to make sure that we've enabled the retraction. And if you're running a Bowden tube machine, then I started my test at five. So uh, the research says between four and six. If you have a direct drive, they talk about one to two. I have the retraction speed set at 25 because a Cobra Go, the EEPROM is defaulted at a maximum of 25. So it is set to the max. That means that any value that you set higher than 25 here, it does not matter. The AnyCubic Cobra Go default EEPROM will only run at a maximum of 25 millimeters per second. I come over to the extensions. I'm taking apart for calibration. I'm adding a plain regular cube. I'm going to come over to the scale the size of that cube and make sure that the uniform scaling is not checked. I look at the X axis is the red one here and I want to have 0 0.8 because I want two line widths. Then I'm going to be looking at the Y. I want it to be 50 millimeters long. Whoops, 550 millimeters long. And then I want it to be a single layer height so i put 0.2 i hit enter there is the strip so i now right click on it and i'm going to multiply the selected so i want to have five lines so i'm going to be adding four more and there you have the five lines so i'm just tilting the angle a little bit using my right mouse button and i use my the scrolling wheel on my mouse to bring it in so that I can click this line then I'm going to push the shift button and now I'm adding to my selection until I have all five lines highlighted I right click and now I'm grouping the models so it is now grouped together they will all move together when I move them I'm going to right click and I'm going to multiply the selected and I'm going to reduce this number because I just want to add one so I say okay I come over, I'm going to click on it, they are patterned together, but they're side by side. I want one to be in front of the other. So this one here is centered, so I'm going to come over here to reposition it. I'm looking at my Y axis here, so I'm going to take it negative 25 millimeters and I move it back. So it is now moved back. So I'm now clicking on the second pattern that I created. It's offset on the X axis, so I'm going to zero it out. And then I want to move it forward on the Y axis. Looks like they're overlapped about halfway, and I want a little bit of a gap in between. So I'm going to move it forward by 35 millimeters. And so now I have a gap in between my uh, rear pattern and my front pattern. I'll just zoom out a little bit using the scroll wheel so that you can see I am favoring towards the front maybe a little bit maybe yes maybe no doesn't matter but this is the center center pattern so I'm coming over here on the right hand side and I'm going to look at my material and I want the center pattern to be 200 degrees so I'm leaving that at 200 degrees and I want my bed to be 50. 50 works very well on my bed. So I slice it. And now I'm going to save this to my disk for being able to run it. So I'm going to call this uh, centered. Oops. Centered 50 200. And I'm going to hit save. Okay, so now 
I have the file that I need to run for this center pattern. I got to warn you that I always run a priming line on the left hand side here. So every time you go to run one of these files, make sure to remove that priming line before you run the next file. I want to group these together before I move them to the left to create the left pattern. So I'm going to press the shift key and then I click on the second pattern. I'm going to right click. So I'm grouping the models together. They're now joined together and I want to move it to the left hand side to make the left pattern. So I'm looking at the X axis. I come over and I'm going minus 50 and I hit enter. And now the pattern is moved to the left. I come over here. I'm going to change my temperature to 190. I'm going to slice it. So there you have it. I'm going to save it. And now I'm just saving it to my desktop and I'm leading with that. It's left and that the bed temperature is 50. The nozzle temperature is 190. I save it. So that's actually going to be the first file that I will run. So now I need to create the right hand column. So I just come over to the X, but now I'm going to put positive 50. I hit enter. It has moved it to the far right. I come over here and I change the temperature to 210 degrees. I hit slice. There we have it. And you can see each time, I mean, when you slice it, it pops up as a minute. So I'm going to save it to the disk. And this time I'm calling it right. And then the bed temperature was 50. And now it's 210 degrees that I have just created the file for. The next step that I take is that I will take those three files. I'll put them onto the SD card. I will put them into the printer and I will run the first pattern so the 190 the left hand is going to run at 190 and 50 as and i'll stand there and watch it because it, it basically once it's warmed up it takes two minutes as soon as it is complete i'll remove my prime strip on the left hand side and i will run the centered pattern which is going to raise the temperature up to 200 degrees on the nozzle and keep the bed at 50 i'll and i'll run that then I'll run the last pattern, which is of course 210 degrees, and then I will analyze the results. If you feel that you might be somewhere in between the 200 and the 210, you can always set yourself up a pattern that runs at 205 and then inspect it. I inspect the ends of the lines where the nozzle is doing its retraction. So you can run this little play button here and it's going to have the nozzle shoot through and you're, you're going to be able to see that it is doing the retraction on this end of it. I did it in two locations on the bed just to see if there was any issue with any warpage in the bed, etc. But in my case, the bed is not a factor. It's not a big deal.